You know, you have time when you're uh, <laughs> doing things like reading the gospel to figure out what your sermon might be. <laughs> and, uh, you know, God bless Carol, say, say a little prayer for her. You know, car issues are really difficult. And I just got a, a new vehicle. And it was difficult getting it. You know, and it was difficult getting rid of all the salesmen who've been calling me incessant. You know, I mean, get a car and sit against your brother in thought, word, and maybe eat when you're talking about a good car salesman. Um, nah, they did well by me. They went to a good place. Turn in your Book of Common Prayer. I'm not really going to do a Baptist thing. Uh, thank you. And go to page. Let me find it here. You know, you turn to these things automatically. All the time. Lord's Prayer. What page is that on? Everybody know? It is a book. That's too easy. That's too easy. Page 364, yeah. 364. Okay, let's do that. Now there's two uh, Lord's Prayers there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And um, what we always really want to try to understand is the language around it. How often do you really stop and think about the Lord's Prayer? And yet we say it all the time. You know by heart, right? Our Father. Who said God is a Father? The Bible says God is a Father. What if, what if God is a mother? You know what? Well, we're confused about these things these days. Whatever you believe about God's gender, you know, we get used to using language that's comfortable for us. In all our lives, we've, we've gotten this image of this big, gray-haired, flowing, long hair. I have to reinforce that. Um, we got this image. And when we're talking about the Lord's Prayer, what do you really say inside yourself? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Sacred. Uh, Wakan in Indian language is the word for sacred. Wakan. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Do you believe the kingdom's coming? Amen. I do. But some Episcopalians are kind of wishy washy on the whole end of time thing, you know. Eventually, something's going to change on this earth in a really dramatic way. Because, you know, we're kind of heavy. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will. God's will. Not mine. God's will. What do you call to do? Is that God's will? I've been talking a lot about this in the confirmation class. You know, this is something that, that folks really need to understand about their relationship with God. Our Father, well, I, you know, I tend to call God creator. Pretty neutral, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Indians, that really is what Kashala means. And, uh, 
And so we, we continue, though, to reinforce this image. And I saw something on the news this morning about a guy who was talking about <clears throat> Christian nationalism and white Christianity. White Christianity. I got the book I haven't read it yet. I will be. Because he's an evangelist who comes down hard on the fact that religion is for rich people who don't live below the poverty level. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's interesting because we know it, but we don't acknowledge it. That's what's interesting about it to me. It's time to start acknowledging it. In this community, it's time to start acknowledging that we are not a church for rich people, we are a church for everyone who wants to come here. And we make that known when people come here, just by being who we are. So are we huge? No, we're a little weird. <laughs> I think a lot of folks in the diocese see us as just a little bit more weird, you know, not exclusively black, you know. Radical. Let anybody come in? Radical. Let anybody come in? Yeah, we do that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is not heaven. I guess it can get to be heaven like depending on what you're. You know, I was going to refer to the 60s and 70s when heaven was drug induced. It was. It really was. People got tired of that. And now, you know, we can't get people into churches at all. It's not just happening to Episcopalians, it's happening everywhere, with the exception probably of the Catholic Church. But yeah, the church is out there hurting because we need to take, <coughs> excuse me, we need to take the time to explain things like the Lord's Prayer. Who are we as Christians? Are you just an Episcopalian? Or are you a Christian in the broader sense? Are you a Christian who loves Catholics and Baptists and Jews and Palestinians? Do you love them all? Well, how the heck do we deal with what's going on in our world right now? We can't. God can. And we take his direction to do things in the community to draw attention to those things that we need to draw attention to. Like the poor people who are dying alone in this community who can't get proper medical care. And a lot of them don't understand those things. And I'm sad about it because we don't take the time that we should to help folks understand what's happening to them and find what they need to make them better. Mm -hmm. That's who I think we are as Christians, and that's who I think we are <coughs> as Episcopalians. Do you think the same? Mm -hmm. Prove it. Live your life that way. That's the message. Live the life of a Christian. And the little ones that Christ talks about, the less fortunate, think about them, please. Because they're not thought about a lot. We don't see them. We walk down the street and we don't see them. So decide what your identity is as a Christian. And then move up and forward from there. Amen. 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 Amen.